What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a case from a company by the name of Mean It. They actually sent me their uh, 4 p.m. case, which is an ATX cube case with tempered glass side panels all around. So at the front of the case, we've got tempered glass up front. Um, there is a little bit of airflow surrounding the tempered glass, kind of on the sides and bottom. Uh, it's not going to be like the ultimate airflow case, but it, there is a little bit there. Of course, looks are taking a little bit of priority here. Um, there are fans underneath here. I think to get kind of like the best optimal airflow, you probably should have some nice static pressure fans uh, up front here. The ones that are included are not that great in this particular area. So that's just something to keep in mind. But aside from that, on the front panel, you do have your uh, front IO on the left side here. You've got four USB ports, two of them USB 3.0 which I like, that's nice. Um, you've got your mic and headphone jacks, your power, and then these three buttons here down at the bottom are for a uh, fan controller, which I will talk about a little bit later. By the way, you can move the front IO to the right side if you want, depending on how your uh, case is set up. I think most people though are just gonna keep it on the left side. Now, if we pull the front panel off, you can see there are four fans here up front for the intake. These fans are their arc blue fans, which basically have an LED ring that kind of surrounds the fan to give it a little subtle lighting when you have the uh, front panel installed. But you can also get this with uh, red LED fans or with no LEDs on the fans if you want a little more subtle look. But uh, anyways, these fans are installed on a bracket which can be removed if you want to uh, run a little bit of a different intake setup. So if you take that off, you can actually run up to a 220 or 240 millimeter fans up front, kind of in the main compartment area. And then on the uh, right side, you can run up to 380 millimeter fans. Or if you want to run a radiator up front, you can install up to a 280 millimeter radiator. Now let's move on to the top panel here. Um, at the top, you can see there is a removable uh, magnetic dust filter here to kind of keep dust from creeping in at the uh, top of your case. And underneath that, you've actually got plenty of cooling options. So up top, you can run up to 420 millimeter fans or 240 millimeter fans. Or if you wanted to go with a radiator up top, you can do two 240 millimeter radiators or a single 280 millimeter radiator. Um, now, this is the first case I've actually used where you can do uh, two 240 millimeter radiators on the same side, like two on the front or two on the top. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, maybe if you've got some uh, more hardcore water cooling setup, that'd be something that you can use. I don't know that I would put it to use, but I, I don't know, it's just kind of cool that it's there. Now, as far as the side panels go, you've got tempered glass on both sides. So that's on the uh, main compartment area, as well as on the back side where your uh, cable management and stuff would go behind the motherboard tray. Um, the glass is tinted, so you can't really see through it without direct uh, light. So that's kind of nice. Um, you know, if you're running like any type of RGB stuff, it's gonna give you more of a subtle glow rather than light up your whole room, which I actually prefer. Also, the tempered glass is pretty thick. It comes in at uh, five millimeters in thickness. Uh, most cases that I've used either have three millimeters or four millimeters, uh, four millimeter thick tempered glass, which is uh, a little bit of an upgrade here on this case. The only other one that I've used that has the same thickness is the uh, Rosewool Cullinan, which also had five millimeter thick panels. So um, I think these guys have like the same OEM though, so that's probably why. Now the mounting solution is still not my favorite. You've got the uh, four thumb screws to kind of hold the tempered glass side panels on. I still prefer kind of like a door mechanism like the Inwin 303, but this is pretty much how like 99% of tempered glass cases are at this point, so I don't know, what can you do? Anyways, moving on to the back side, you can kind of see here the uh, dual chamber setup with the rear IO right in the middle there, and then you've got a uh, 92 millimeter fan mount kind of in the uh, back side there, and a 120 millimeter fan mount in the main compartment. Um, this case does include an exhaust fan, so you get five fans total. Uh, with this case. The rear exhaust fan is the same as the ones that come up front. And then towards the bottom of the case here, you can see the uh, PSU mounting location and then the seven uh, PCI slots. Now let's go ahead and pull off one of the side panels and take a look at the interior here. Now, as you can see, this is a dual chamber design. I think I mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah, you may have heard of that. <laughs> Basically what that means is that uh, like your motherboard and your GPU, CPU, all that stuff goes in the main compartment and then you've got kind of like a second area for like your drive cages, your power supply, all the not so pretty stuff kind of gets sorted out uh, in the back side of the case. And that allows you to have kind of a, a, a super clean main compartment area, which I like. So 
But all the uh, junk stuff or the stuff that would make a mess in the backside, keep everything clean up front. So let's see, there are some other things uh, about the interior here. The uh, 4PM case supports up to an ATX uh, motherboard. You've got uh, rubber grommets for your cable routing, which I'm a fan of. There's support for a 120 millimeter fan down at the bottom with a removable dust filter. They've even got a location here where you can install either a three and a half inch drive or a pump or reservoir if you are water cooling. Now on the back side of the motherboard tray, you've got a removable drive cage here uh, where you can install three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. You can also install two two and a half inch drives over the rubber grommets if you need a little bit of extra drive space. Um, not really sure how cable management is gonna work when you do that, but uh, I don't know, it's an option for you. Unfortunately, the fans that come with this case are three pin only, so you don't really get to take advantage of the controller uh, like you should. Those uh, fancy buttons on the front don't really do anything when the fan controller is running in DC mode, so that was a little bit of a uh, missed opportunity there. I think the uh, PWM fan controller should accompany PWM fans. I mean, only makes sense, right? But uh, anyway, let me go ahead and throw a build in this case, and then I'll let you guys know what I think about it. All right, so here's a finished build you guys can take a look at. Uh, looks pretty clean overall. I would say the case was pretty simple to build in, but there were a couple quirks here and there, which I'll talk about. Um, I was able to fit my GTX 1070 in this case with no issues. Um, you can fit up to a 240 millimeter GPU in this case, so that really shouldn't be an issue for anyone out there. <laughs> with these current uh, GPUs that are on the market. Um, no issues installing my 240 millimeter AIO. Um, if you've got a 280 millimeter one though, you may have some issues with the hose routing because the radiator um, on a 280 millimeter one would actually install right in the middle of the case, kind of between the uh, main chamber and the uh, second chamber behind the motherboard. So I'm not really sure how that would work, but uh, just kind of pointing that out there. Now, if you're air cooling, you can install air coolers up to 172 millimeters in height. So that does mean installing like a Hyper 212 Evo or something like that would be a non-issue as you'll have uh, plenty of clearance. One thing I noticed is there are no uh, cutouts down at the bottom for the front panel connectors. Since the ATX motherboard goes all the way to the bottom of the case, there's not really anywhere to put them. So that was kind of a little bit disappointing. I actually didn't even install my uh, HD audio cable because it would have looked kind of weird. And also because I get some nasty interference when I want to use my mod mic. But uh, aside from that, um, yeah. Now when it came to installing drives in this case, I did install everything in the uh, drive cage that they have. Uh, and I noticed that the uh, if you install two and a half inch drives in the drive cage, it actually sits too far back so that you can't use one SATA power cable for all of your drives, which obviously is gonna lead to a little bit more clutter cable management wise, and it's just overall a little bit more annoying. So I would like to see them um, you know, kind of rearrange that so that the uh, two and a half inch drives sit up front like the three and a half inch drives do and uh, that should be a non-issue. So let's see, what are some other things? Oh, oh, um, I did have to move the PWM fan controller a little bit because my PSU was too long. So I kind of just moved it towards the front of the case. My uh, PSU is kind of big, so I don't know if everyone's gonna have that issue, but that's just something that I had to do. Speaking of my power supply, one thing that I ran into, which was kind of the biggest issue that I had, is that my PSU cables were way too long for this case. I actually ended up having to remove the uh, nice black extensions that I normally run on this case because everything was just too long and there's not really anywhere to tie down the cables in this case. You kind of just have to tuck them away back there somewhere, which is fine. It's just I had way too many and this may vary by power supply. I don't know if everyone's gonna have this issue, but I took them out. So I'm just running these ugly ketchup and mustard cables, which uh, aren't the best looking, but uh, yeah, I think with this case, maybe some custom cables or something that is shorter would look the best. So just gonna wrap this up. Here's kind of the negative things that uh, I ran into with this case. So number one, does need uh, shorter PSU cables to look the best. Again, I don't know if everyone's gonna run into this issue, but I'd probably recommend uh, custom cables in this case if you wanted the uh, kind of best scenario or maybe it's a power supply that has uh, shorter cables in general. This case includes a PWM fan controller, but does not come with PWM fans. What kind of sense does that make? Also, the drive support is a little bit awkward for two and a half inch drives. I don't know why you would install your two and a half inch drives over your uh, rubber grommets where you route cables through. 
Also, the uh, two and a half inch drives sit too far back in the drive cage, which means you can't use one SATA power cable to daisy chain all of your drives, which is kind of annoying. But aside from that, I love the uh, dual chamber configuration. It is uh, definitely a way to keep everything clean uh, build wise. There's plenty of cooling and radiator support. So whether you wanted to do air cooling or some type of water cooling, you've got plenty of options there, which I like. This case has thick tempered glass side panels, which again, that's a nice to have option. And overall, just the uh, potential to have a pretty clean build is there, which is the uh, most important thing. And uh, aside from a few shortcomings, I'm actually a fan of this case. I think I'll go ahead and keep my main system in it for a little bit. So that's about it, guys. Let me know what you think about this case down in the comments below. And I will catch you next time. See ya.